Today we're going to learn about a tool for Unity 3D called iTween, and we're going to learn about how to use it in uh, your Jibe world, and to also allow it to um, create events, iTween events that are networked, that is, events, things that are happening in the virtual world that are shared between all visitors to the virtual world in real time. Um, so first of all, let's let's go back to this blog post that I made um, almost oh, a little over two years ago, um, where I basically introduce everybody to what iTween is all about. And iTween is basically a it's a fantastic tool that allows you to create animations in uh, Unity 3D, and you don't have to be a programmer to be able to do it. Um, I encourage you to check out this this blog post uh, because in here I talk about how I animated a, um, a companion cube so that when you click on it it plays a sound and something happens and then we're gonna actually use a piece of this script but first let's go into this web page and these bookmarks I'll have attached to the comments uh, to the description of this video but iTween is a, is, a, is a really amazing editor for um, Unity because it allows you to create very complex animations, in particular when an object moves along a path. It's a very powerful animation system, really. It's, it's, it's not just a tool, it's an entire system. And it's a component that you add to your Unity project. So once you've added iTween to your Unity project, it allows you to do a lot of really amazing things. And just as an example, if you dig through some of the documentation. Um, it documents what all these different commands do. So for example, you have, um, here's an interesting one, color. You can actually have a command that changes a game object's color value from something to something else. Um, so it's not just moving things around, it's also, you know, you can use it to control camera fades. If I back up here and go back to the, um, the documentation here, you can see it even does things with audio rotation, scaling, you can have something um, become bigger or smaller depending on, on uh, which, whatever you want to do. Um, so iTween is really, really powerful and there is a great uh, tool that uses iTween that allows you to not even have to really worry about any programming whatsoever and that is called the iTween Visual Editor. And that's this page here, the iTween Visual Editor. The iTween Visual Editor allows you to control all of the different iTween uh, types from within the inspector window in the Unity Editor. So you don't have to actually go in and edit any scripts. You basically can do all kinds of cool iTween um, stuff and access all of these different, um, all of these different commands um, just by editing things in the inspector window in the Unity Editor. So, how do you actually get iTween to work with your uh, Jive projects? Well, let's start from the beginning here, and this is a uh, this is a plain Jive 2.0 project kit. And if I click the play button, it's just in local single-player mode. And here I am walking around, dumpty dum, chatting, doing whatever I want. Now to add the iTween visual editor to your project, uh, you're going to go to the Unity Asset Store. Now again, if you look at the, um, you know, the documentation, remember there is the iTween uh, extension itself, and then there's the iTween visual editor. Now what you're going to do is you're going to add only the visual editor to your project. And I explain that in this blog post too. You know, you install iTween by just installing the visual editor. The trick is to remember to not install the visual editor and also install the iTween component because the visual editor comes with the iTween um, component already bundled. And I'll walk you through that here. You can see how this actually works. So let's say I want to I want to add some iTweening to my project. How do I do this? Okay. Well, you just go to your um, window and Asset Store. This is probably my favorite menu option in all of the Unity Editor. And sometimes it takes a little while for the Asset Store window to pop up, in particular if you've got a ton of things that you've purchased from the Asset Store because it has to cache all of that stuff. Here we go. Um, all right, so if you search 
the Unity Asset Store for iTween, you will see that up comes the iTween component here. And you can see the iTween component here. But the other thing that also pops up is the iTween Visual Editor. Oops, let me search this again. You can see these two options. You have iTween and the iTween Visual Editor. All you need to install is this. Because if you install this, it includes this. That's the thing to remember. So all you have to do is install the iTween Visual Editor. And I'll select it, and I'll select Import, and it grabs it from the editor. And I always encourage people to take a look for a moment at this screen whenever it pops up, whenever you're adding anything from the Unity Asset Store, and just take note, like, oh, okay, it's going to create the iTween Editor folder, and it's going to put these things in here, and there's a README file in there. And it's actually very important that you read this README file. And I'll show you why in a moment. But I'm going to click the Import button here. And it will import all of that stuff into my Jive project. And this Jive project is, again, um, you know, a uh, default Jive project kit. There's nothing added to it. So this is starting from scratch. I'm showing you the entire process. So if I now look at my Jive project folder, I see the iTween editor in here. And if I open up the iTween editor, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Now, when something is written in all in capital letters, you know, it's usually a hint that you really should read this. And this is very important because if you open up the README file, you can see here it says after installation, if you have a JavaScript based project, it is highly recommended that you run the component iTween prepare visual editor for JavaScript usage command. This will copy files into your plugins directory, which is necessary for the visual editor um, events to be called from JavaScript. If you're doing everything in C Sharp, you don't need to do this. Well, most folks I know working with Jive usually have a combination of C Sharp and JavaScript stuff going on, so you really need to do this. Good thing we read the README file. Now, the way that once you've installed iTween, the way that you get to the iTween editor stuff is actually under the component menu here. And if you click on this, um, you um, should see a Jibe option down here. Now, if you don't, I'm actually glad this happened because sometimes you don't see this. If you don't see this, then just um, you know try going to a different, um, let's just load a different scene. Let's go to scene two. Uh, let's say, well, yeah, let's just save that. Let's go to Jive Basic here. It's under component. No, it's still not there. If that does, if that happens, if you don't see anything that says Jive down here, you just close Unity and open it up again. Because sometimes it doesn't stick the first time after you install it. But when in doubt with Unity, just open it and close it again. Now if I go under component, ha ha, iTween. See that? That's what you should see. That means I have installed the iTween visual editor correctly. And the README file is telling me I need to run this um, prepare the editor for JavaScript com command. And you can find that under component, iTween. And here it is, prepare the visual editor for JavaScript usage. And this will allow the visual editor to move some files around uh, to make everything work well with any JavaScript code that you use. So I'm going to select this. And Unity hums away. And you notice it moved some things around in here. It moved some stuff. It, it has a plugins folder now with iTween content in here. It has the iTween component, and it also has the iTween visual editor and all that stuff. So everything is good. If I go under component here, you know this thing will stay here, but you don't need to run this um, more than once. You just do it once. So that means now we have iTween visual editor added, and we can start adding iTween events to anything in our environment. So let's do that. Let's do, okay, let's make a game object. Um, um, let's create a, uh, a cube, right? A cube, everybody's favorite default object. And we'll just put it on the ground right here. And let's see, where am I? Okay, I'll put it on the ground. This is a good location. Drop the cube here. And I'm going to call this cube, I, uh, just cube, and I'm going to say this is uh, iTween. You know, something's going on with this cube with iTween. So I've got the cube selected. The way you add an iTween event to the object that you currently have selected is you simply have it selected here, and you go to component, iTween, iTween event. 
and all of a sudden you'll see in the inspector window now there is an event added to my cube you need to call each itween event uh, something because you can have tons of itween events in your in any particular scene in jibe and in unity uh, so i'm going to call this event um, spin me because i'm going to make this cube spin um, I could have it so that it plays automatically. Let's leave that che checked for now. Here are all of the different iTween events. Now notice I'm not doing any coding. I'm just selecting, okay, do I want to, ooh, do I want to do, what do I want to do? I want to do a rotate by. I'm going to do rotate by. I'm going to rotate by uh, the Y axis, which is the green axis, is the up and down axis. I want to rotate around the Y axis. So that means the cube will be going like this. Right, it'll be rotating around the um, the y-axis, which is uh, vertical, up and down. Around the y-axis, I want to rotate it by one degree um, over the course of of um, I don't know, ten seconds. Um, and I think uh, that's all I need to do for now. I'm not going to select any of these other things. All of these things, all, you know, you're wondering, what are, all, what are all these things doing? What the heck are they? All of that is listed in the um, documentation here for iTween. All of those commands. So everything you see here is everything you see here. So, so rotate by the around the y-axis one degree over a course of 10 seconds. And I have it set to play automatically. So what does that mean? Without, uh, let me turn off these things. Let me save the scene. If I run the scene, this cube should just start rotating right away as soon as I appear in it. So let's see what happens. Click play. Um, I'm a little off screen here, but that's okay. Click start. And where's that cube? Oh, there it is, and it's spinning. And I have it set for it starts fast and slowly tapers off. Um, if you read the documentation, you can learn how you can do different what are called ease types. This is basically starting strong and tapering off over 10 seconds. Uh, but you can make it so it rotates constantly. But by default, it chooses this very organic looking kind of ease type. Um, I'll play it again here. Play, start. So you can see the cube starting off and it decays over 10 seconds rotating one degree until it stops. So this is pretty cool, right? I got a cube that rotates autom automatically. But how do I make it so that uh, if I click on the cube, I want to click on the cube and have it rotate. Well, that means we need to add our own little script. And it's very easy to add a script that says, you know, when you click on something, do something. And I go over that in my blog post um, here, which is uh, titled you know, how to make an object move and play a sound when you click on it. And the script, if you scroll down in my blog post, very simple JavaScript, basically saying, um, you know, defining an audio clip. And so function on mouse down, when you click on something, play an audio clip and do this iTween event. This is where the magic happens. This is where you get to call the iTween event. This come this line right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this whole script here. Right click copy. And I'm going to go to the editor. And um, I'm going to make a new folder. I always like to have a folder just for any stuff that I'm kind of writing by hand. So I'm going to create a folder and call it, you know, John's scripts. And I'm in this folder and I'm going to go create a JavaScript, and I'm going to call this JavaScript um, click to do something. Okay, and the script is, you know, Unity creates a JavaScript that has nothing in it, so I'm going to double click on this to edit it in my editor of choice, which is Notepad. And I'm just going to paste in what I got from that. Uh, uh, blog post. But I'm going to change the script a little bit because I'm not going to play a sound, so I can delete this thing, you know, variables, defining the sound variable, and I can delete this stuff. I'm not going to play an audio, anything. And so here is the most simple script you can have for, you know, clicking on an object and doing an iTween event. Now, for extra credit, cool thing is you can have more than one iTween event. I could have multiple events. Just copy this line and duplicate it, playing different types of events. But for now, we're just going to have one event. The cube is going to rotate. 
Um, so I'm going to save this script. Right? And I'm going to go now back to the editor, and you can see my script is updated. Function on mouse down simply means if I click on this object, it's going to do and it's going to fire an iTween event. Okay, so I've got my cube. My cube has an iTween event in here called Spin Me. It's set to play automatically. Let's change that. It's not going to play automatically. There is an event, an iTween event, that's going to rotate the cube by one degree over ten seconds. How do I make this happen? Well, I need to put into my cube my click to do something script. So I'm going to just collapse the iTween event here in the cube. And I'm going to go click to do something, just drag this into the cube. Boom. Click to do something wants to know the target. Um, you know, what's the target of whatever this, what, what the iTween event is going to do? What's the target of the iTween event? And the target is the cube itself, right? So I'm going to say, okay, the target is the cube, so I'm going to drag cube iTween. I'm going to drag it over here, drop it in here. So the target is my cube, and the event name, the iTween event name, if you remember that, is here. It's called spin me. So I'm going to go spin me. Okay. The reason the target is here is because this def the way I wrote this script, um, if I look at this, if you look at this script, you can see you can define an iTween event. It's, you basically say, what is this going to affect? By default, it affects whatever object the iTween event is embedded in. But in this case, you know, you can say, perhaps I click on the cube and it causes something over here to spin. That's how. That's why that exists. But let's test this out. What should happen, right? I should come in this environment, click on the cube, and it should spin. Pretty simple. So I'm going to go save scene. Click play. Jump in. There's my cube. It's not spinning. That's a good sign. I'm going to walk over to my cube, click on it, and she spins and slowly stops. Isn't that cool? Now, this is very, very powerful. iTween can do all kinds of amazing things. But by default, what you're doing are um, local events, which means if you're logged into a Jibe world, remember Jibe, the special thing about Jibe is it allows you to create a multi-user environment. By default, when you're working in the Unity editor, whatever you're doing, it's what's called a local event. Okay, so the difference is between local and networked. Okay, a local event means if I log, if I publish this Jibe world, and a bunch of people log into it, and I walk up to it, and I'm next to my my avatar is standing next to my friend, and, and we both go up to this cube, and I say, "Hey, I'm going to click on the cube," and I click on it. I will see it rotating. My friend will not. Now, this allows for very powerful design opportunities. You can create experiences in your Jive world that are a combination of local and networked, and that's really the most powerful thing you can do with with. Uh, with uh, creating experiences in Jive is to create experiences where perhaps maybe you know somebody is talking to an, a non-player character and maybe you don't want everyone in the environment to hear that non-player character talking you only want to hear you only want one person you know the person who clicked on the character to hear it and maybe you want to have a group of people each of them with their own maybe invis invisible personal assistants or something or maybe a group of people working on an educational um, simulation and you want each person to be working at their own speed on the same model. That way, you know, using local events is very powerful. You can allow people to just be working at their own pace, and they are each seeing their own version of reality to some extent. If you combine that with networking events, that's very powerful. Uh, a good example of uh, where you would want something to be networked would be a, a door, right? If someone is walking in front of you and clicks on a door, and you could use iTween to script the door to rotate open and closed, um, you want everyone to see the door opening, don't you? You don't want just the person who clicked on it to see it. So, by default, what we've done right here, and I'll even rename this, you know, well, I won't rename the cube for now, but, you know, what we've done here is we've created an iTween local event, right? We've created a local event. Now, how do we make things networked? Well, when we realized at Reaction Grid, when we realized that iTween was a very powerful tool, we decided to include in the Jive 2.0 project kit a script that we've written that allows you to make any iTween event a networked event. So again, what is included in the Jive 2.0 project kit is a script 
that will allow you to make any iTween event something that everyone who's logged into your multi-user Jibe world will see happening at the same time. Very, very powerful, right? Because if you think about all the possibilities with iTween, about all of the different things you can do with it, um, you could make pretty much any kind of networked event you want. You know, sounds, color changes, drawing things, uh, moving objects, um, all kinds of stuff. Really amazing. Camera control as well. So, how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. Let's first of all make another cube. We're going to keep this cube as a local iTween event, and we're going to make the same exact behavior. I walk up to the cube and I click on it and it rotates, but we're going to make that one a networked iTween cube. So I'm going to go into a game object, and I'm going to go create other, make another cube, plant that one down, and just for, for simplicity's sake, so we can remember, you know, left is local, right is network. So left is the local cube. And we're going to make this cube, and I'm going to call this cube up here in the hierarchy. Um, I'm going to call it iTween Networked. Right. Very cool. So what I'm going to do is go and select my cube. And I'm going to create another iTween event. Remember, I have my cube selected. I go under Component, iTween, Create an iTween event. And let's open up the event here. And we'll make it the same kind of thing, except we'll just call this one, you know, Spin Me Too. Um, it's, we don't want it to play automatically. We want the event type to be a um, rotate by, rotate around the y-axis, which is, again, the green up and down axis. Rotate it by a degree over the course of 10 seconds, and it'll automatically start, you know, fast and slow down. At the end of the 10 seconds, it'll stop. Okay. So I have an iTween event called Spin Me Too, that is not going to play automatically. And there it is. It's in my cube. Now, instead of using that click to do something script to actually enable, you know, clicking on it. I'm going to go into the Jibe folder, and this is part of the Jibe 2.0 project kit, so it will be in exactly the same location on your in your project if you're using Jibe 2.0. I'll open up Jibe, and in here you'll see I have a folder called Scripts. All right. And there are all kinds of scripts in here. I highly encourage you to go in here and check out all these awesome scripts, because some of them you, uh, are uh, you may not know exist, and they all have really, really good documentation and commenting. So if I go down to oh, networking. What are what are the networking um, scripts here? You know, and what are these sample scripts down here? Samples are things that we think are pretty cool that we just dumped in here. <laughs> we didn't dump them, but we placed them in here in a nice organization, actually, very nicely organized. Um, Chris Hart did all of this work. Um, we put it in a folder, we put them in a folder called Samples, and here it is, Jibe iTween Click. Jibe iTween Click is a C-sharp script, you can see it says you know, C-sharp here, and you can tell it's C-sharp here, that allows you to basically synchronize iTween events across a network. And I'm going to double-click this script and open it up in my editor, so you can see it on my screen here because there's something very important here. And again, it comes down to you should always read the documentation, right? Because the iTween script here, uh, you know, you could take this and modify it if you wanted it to be something like, I don't want it to be a, when you click on something, I want it to be maybe a, a collider event causes something, or I want it to be something else. Um, you know, this script, you could come in here and, and uh, explore it and make your own script based on it if you want. But there's something very important in the commenting. Always read all of the green code here, right? all the commented code, because if you scroll down here, you'll notice you need to uncomment a line for this to work, because see here, this line here where it's commented? You need to uncomment this line after you have installed iTween, you know, or the iTween Visual Editor. The reason that this exists is because if you have this enabled, if you have this uncommented, your project will throw an error because it tries to compile this, it tries to compile this uh, script, and it'll be like, oh, there's nothing in here for iTween event because iTween's not installed. So 
the thing to remember is first you install iTween, and then if you want to use the Jive iTween click script, come in here and uncomment this. Because if you don't uncomment it, the script just won't work. So again, before you use the Jive iTween click, the first thing you need to do is install the iTween visual editor like I just did. And the second thing you need to do is you need to come in here and you need to delete this like that. So now it's uncommented, so it's, this script will now work. So I'm just going to save that here. The, the, the rule of thumb is, remember, read all of the readme files that are included with stuff that you download, and to also always look through a script to read the commenting before you start using the script. Because um, it's a very, you know, if you didn't read this, you would be running the script and you'd be like, how come it's not working? It's broken. Um, so I've saved this, and now this is uncommented, right? So this is the, um, this thing will work. Now I'm going to close my editor. So now I've edited the Jive iTween click script. So I've got my cube. I've got my iTween event, and I want to make this an, a networked uh, iTween event. So I take now the Jive iTween click um, script here. I'll just drag it into the cube. Boom, like that. So now when I select my cube over here, you notice it's asking me, what is the iTween event to fire when you click on this cube? Well, it's the event that I just embedded. I just have to remember what I called it. I called it Spin Me Too. So I'll come over here and I'll just type in Spin Me Too. And I'll go Scene Save. And I'm going to click Play. So let's see how this works. Right? I'm in the Jive Left is a local rotation, right? I'll click here. All right, that's rotating. I come over here. This is the networked. I come over here. I click on it. Okay, that's rotating. Ta-da! Is it working, though? Well, just like those cooking shows, um, I've already uploaded this, <laughs> this project to the web. Um, so let's go and see how this actually looks live. All right. I'm going to go to... Um, uh, let's see here. I got to open up two copies of the Jibe World where I've loaded it. Now, the thing to remember is you never want to open up two different Jibe Worlds in the same web browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the uploaded Jibe World here in Chrome, and I'm going to you know call myself John Chrome because I'm in the Chrome browser. And here's the world uploaded. Let's see. I can just like those cooking shows. I've already baked the casserole. I'm in the world by myself, and I click on this left cube, and yeah, this is the local one that I made, exactly the same way I made it just now in the video. Okay, and here's the networked one. You know, I can't tell the difference. That just the same thing is happening, exactly the same thing. Well, something very different is happening. When I click on this cube, anyone else who is in this environment will see the cube rotating. In On this cube, it's a local event, which means I see it rotating because I clicked on it, but no one else will. So let's see how this actually looks by opening up the world in a second browser. This is Firefox. I'm going to open up this uploaded world. And here I'm going to log in as, um, you know, John Firefox. And I'll just use a different outfit. Still bald. And you can see now, I've logged into the same Jive world, same URL here. I'm logged into the same Jive world in two different browsers. And so I'm going to, John Firefox is going to come over here and, oh, there's John Chrome. And I'm going to stand next to John Chrome. And keep your eye in the, keep your eye over here. You'll see me. Here I am. Hey, John, how's it going? Talking to myself. <laughs> Okay, now, here's where it gets really interesting. Keep an eye on um, um, keep an eye on the screen over here, okay? So I am in Firefox. I am John Firefox, and I'm going to click on the local cube, the local iTween cube. Click. Notice that John Firefox sees the cube rotating because he clicked on it, but John Chrome doesn't see it rotating here. All right? It's moving here. It's not moving here. Well, 
What if John Firefox clicks on the iTween network cube? And here's a moment of truth. If I click on this, it's rotating in both. John Chrome sees the cube rotating that John Firefox clicked on. And the converse is true too. If John Chrome clicks on this cube on the left, only he sees it rotating. But if John Chrome clicks on the, um, the cube here, we gotta make sure it's finished rotating because it's still moving slowly. If John Chrome clicks on this cube, when it's finished rotating, it's rotating here too. John Firefox sees it. And that is the fundamental... Oh good, I came in just as 30 minutes. That's what my goal was. Um, that's fundamentally how you use this very powerful iTween tool to create networked events. So think about very carefully what you want to have as local events versus what you want to have as networked events. You know, if an avatar is walking up to a sign and maybe wants to have some kind of interactive experience with it, maybe you don't want everyone else in the world to see that. So keep that a local event. But if somebody's opening a door, you probably want to make that an iTween networked event. And now you know exactly how to do it. And the thing to remember too is that you have the ability to combine all of these different things happening at the same time. So I could add another iTween event to the cube here, and I'll do this just as a, as a final touch here. You know, I could add another iTween event here. Um, let's see, I'll go under component for extra credit here, iTween event. I'll add a second iTween event, and this iTween event is going to be, um, call it blush. And what it's going to do is it's not going to play automatically but it's going to be a color 2, which is going to make the, um, the cube turn, um, you know, turn very red. And um, then I'm going to go to, I'd have to, I have to modify my click to do something script here because I want to have a second iTween event, the ability to stack them. So I'm going to actually go over here and just modify my script here. This will break some things, but no worries. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and make this a second, you know, like this, and call this event name 2, right? And take this, define another variable, call this event name 2, oops, event name 2, save this, go back to here, and um, I'll probably have to drag this back in here. Let's see. Okay, there it is. It suddenly, see, it refreshed. So now I have the ability to plug in a second event. When I click on this cube, it's going to do two events. The second one is going to be the blush event. It's going to make the cube turn red. So we can make the cube also turn red maybe over time. So it turns red, completely red, over, you know, in the course of 10 seconds. Right. You can actually choose, it's easier to choose colors, like with the color chooser here. You know, so I can say, pick, click the little eyedropper and then choose, you know, the red color here. Okay, so I'm change the cube to this color over 10 seconds when you click on it. So now for extra credit, you know, I have now stacked two iTween events on that local cube. So when I go up to the cube, if I click it, it will spin and turn red slowly over 10 seconds. Ready? Go. Spinning, spinning, turning red. And there we go. Pretty neat. Oh, I just clicked it again. Um, I leave it to you to figure out how to do that with the iTween networked event, but it just involves, you know, uh, tweaking the script. I would highly recommend that you take our sample scripts and make new scripts if you're going to modify them. In that, what I, by that I mean, don't go into Jive iTween, click and change and modify things. Um, you know, leave this as the original and create another script. Script, maybe call it Jive iTween, click two or whatever, and play with modifying it so that you could use multiple iTween events so that you could do things like maybe make it so that it's based on a collider so that you know when an avatar bumps into an invisible collider it causes it to fire or whatever you like and i think that ends the uh i think that ends the lesson and again the links to check are the itween homepage and also the itween visual editor and uh keep an eye on um, on my blog, Be Cunning and Full of Tricks, and most importantly, if you go to reactiongrid.com and you scroll down here, you will see a link to our blog. So whenever I post something on my blog, like a tutorial, it's posted here first. So you can always find our blog posts here and our latest tweets. 
That's it. Thank you for listening. Okay, I'm going to can't close this now. Where is it? Stop it.